Hey there, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be focusing on Rhino 8 and its best new features. Let's get into it. Feature number one, dark mode. This is kind of one we've all been waiting for, um, and I'm glad they finally included it. To turn your Rhino settings to dark mode, just right click on your viewport settings, go down to display options. In this menu, you're gonna to wanna to go up to, under the Rhino options, go to appearance in the subcategory called colors. And up here is where you're going to find dark light, which if I toggle to it, is your traditional Rhino interface. Uh, but for now, we're going to continue on with dark mode. So enjoy. Two is the new gumball and seaplane features they've added. So as you can see now, down on the bottom menu, I have a my gumball is set to world. So when I select my object, you can see that the, the red, green, and blue, which are the X, Y, Z axes, align with the world axes which are predetermined coordinates at zero, zero. So we know that there's a feature where you can right click on this and set your gumball to object or C plane. And what this does is it gives you different functions so it can, can align that gumball with how your object was made. And this is exceptionally help, helpful to scale in certain directions or, or move or offset these sorts of things. But what they've done with uh, Rhino 8 is they've added a new feature which allows you to create this auto C plane, which if I click on, and so now it's toggled on, you can see I have a lot assigned to object. What it can do is actually temporarily move a C plane to a particular object. So what I did there was if I unclick it, I held down control shift and I clicked on this face and what it has done is reposition that C plane there. So now if I go and draw a circle, it's drawing it on that C plane on that face, which is exceptionally helpful. So now if I click off and then I click on that circle, you're, you can see you're now moving the, the, C, the um, C plane around quite quickly. So I didn't click on an object, so it went in the background. Um, but if I did that and then I right click and draw another rectangle, you can see that I am now drawing on that particular face. There's one useful thing that I found, which is you right click on here with the, is the sticky auto C plane. So I control shift, click on a face. Now that C plane is there. And then when I click here, not, not holding any keys, it resets the C plane. But if you toggle on sticky auto C plane, then what it does is, is I can click anywhere I want, select all these. Okay, don't select another object that will not, uh, that will undo it. But but it will allow you to for multiple actions. So I want to draw, you know, this curve and then I want to draw a circle and I actually I want to draw, you know, a rectangle here as well. And that allows you to all do that without resetting the C plane. So it's a really handy tool. Try using the auto C plane and uh, align to object. Also, there's one more useful uh, feature, which is the cut command. You may notice that, actually, let me just delete a couple of these. So it, you may notice that when I select a curve, that there's this new little line that shows up here. So this little line um, is the now a cut command. And what this does is it cuts all objects that you're intersecting with. So if I hold it down, I click and I do that, you now see that I've created a hole in my object. And simultaneously, it would, could work here. It only works with, of course, planar elements. Um, but so if you take this and I drag it this way, it's now, it knows that it's intersecting with that shape. And now what it's done is given me a series of uh, B reps and I can go ahead and delete these two. And you can see it's a quite a useful modeling tool to combine with the auto C plane. Um, so I select this surface, I draw, you know, a, a circle, I go here, I cut through, and what we've done is performed a relatively complex um, action. Number three is a new modeling features for nerves. Um, the first one I'll show you is inset. So if I have an object, a nerves object, what I can do is type in inset, inset. And then I want to use control shift and select a couple faces. And then when I click enter, I'm prompted to specify a distance. And let's just put in three for the sake. And then when I click enter, 
what it has now done is it has split the surface into it has added an additional nerve surface inset in those other surfaces and i can use the next command which is called push pull to qu very quickly transform this object so what it does is it's it's giving me a preview uh, of where it's taking me. And if you're going through back through the object, it's having a difficult time previewing that. But if I click, we can see this happens is it excavates that hole. So I could so I could pull it out, which is quite useful. Or I could inversely do that. That and look at that. We have created a um, completely wireframe BREP geometry in just a few seconds. And, and what this is, this is quite useful because it actually modifies the, the surface rather than adding in a, a new surface, for example, if you were to extrude this face. So I want, I want to get that uh, gumball. So I'm just gonna put this to the auto line C planes. And you can see now I have that gumball. And if I do push pull, I can now pull and quickly modify some of these surfaces, right click, Go there. Um, and let's, you know what, let's, let's make this window half the half the size. You can quickly see how useful this is for BREP modeling. Yeah, so that's push pull. Okay, number four, shrink wrap. This is easily the most hyped uh, feature on Rhino 8. And I'll show you why. It's especially useful for fabrication, 3D printing, etc. So let's say I have a, a series of bespoke and discrete geometries that are not connected and I want to create like a single mesh um, to 3D prints, for example. What shrink wrap does is rather than trying to Boolean together and deal with all the issues that Boolean has, we can just select all, control A or, and then go to shrink wrap what you'll now be asked is a series of questions about the target edge and i'll just gonna go through and um and show you what they are so let's just put one for our target edge and then let's click on preview so we can see what's about to be output and you can see that it's filling in these holes so we actually want to untoggle this fill in holes and maybe this is not the best resolution that we want maybe we want higher resolution so let's actually go to 0.2 and then click enter and what we have is a one single mesh piece with super high resolution that we can eventually, we can run reduce mesh through um, to, to optimize it for the mesh faces, but we have something like this. And if I uh, put a clipping plane here, and let's just go to Arctic. You can see how the one on the right is a bunch of intersections and the one on the left has a lot of clean, beautiful intersections. Lovely. So, so that was one example of shrink wrap. Another example that we could use, is let's say you have something that's mocking up a floor plan and just some really badly drawn geometry just slapped together. And I want to quickly make this into an iterative model um, or a solid mesh piece for a section or something like this. You can just select all, perform the shrink wrap command, come back, and let's, let's once again just click preview. Uh, we see that we're filling in that hole and we don't want to, so let's unfill in that hole. And we want to, but this time we want to offset. So we're going to want to add, add thickness because we don't just want a single mesh surface. We want there to be thickness. So let's just go... Let's just type in one and then let's reduce this to like point, point 0.5 um, just so we have a higher resolution. And now if I click OK, I'm immediately given something that I could go 3D print. Um, it has thickness, thicknesses and whatnot. So you can see quite quickly how valuable this is. And so you can also do points or um, meshes that are open or closed and even blocks. For instance, I have this block and let's actually let's see what happens when i take all 91 of these lovely blocks that are all my uh lovely dinosaurs and then let's shrink that shrink wrap this into one solid piece let's just do 
uh, one and fill holes. No, uh, man, I don't need to do any of that. Let's go. It's going to calculate for a second and you're going to and now if I isolate that shrink wrap, we have one beautiful dinosaur, a hodgepodge that if I, I always like to put clipping planes through my stuff, um, that if I clip through, you get quite the interesting intersection. And look at that. I might throw this on 3D printer later. Okay, that's shrink wrap. Number five, sections. So in Rhino 8, they've given us a lot more functionality to create easy sections from directly from Rhino without doing a lot of illustrator work or whatever. What they've done is they've added a toolbar, which you can find here. If you go to show toolbars and scroll down to sections, you can see I have it already toggled, but it'll bring out this toolbar where you now can most importantly create a section. It will prompt you for what geometry, so just click enter for all, and then I'm just gonna place it in the center of my scene and click enter to be done. You can create multiple sections and you can add to these sections, but just for now, we just need one. Um, so now you can see we have a typical section uh, working, but there's a quick workflow that you can now use to export these sections. I'm just gonna use a page where you can create a new one. Um, right now, it's just sort of in an arbitrary isometric mode. But with the section tool, you now can actually click on the section, go here, and there's a save clipping sections to name the view. So now I can just cl easily click on that. And then when I go in here, set view, and now the, the section has created a view. And now it's super easy for me to line up this section. And of course, within the view, I can also hide the section so we're not so we're not printing out that so one more thing that we have done is we are taking advantage of rhino's layers um so you see that i place all my geometry on their own levels levels layer ground layer foundation layer spheres gem these sort of elements and then i've assigned an actual print additionally to uh, the line types the, pr the print color which you'll find here and the print width there's this new thing that's called section styles where you can actually add hatches. So for example, on the ground, which you will see down here, if I double click on this, we now have some built-in patterns and you can of course add your own. And, and yeah, so you can of course adjust the scale and whatnot. So that when we go ahead and print out this drawing, you can see that the, the print line weights come through and the hatches come through and it's super easy to create sections. And this is, and this is all live. And to demonstrate that, I will go here, click on create clipping section drawings. It'll prompt me for the section. And then what it'll do is allow me to click a drawing and it'll show what that results from that section is. And now you can see that as I change the sectional drawing or the placement of the section, it updates that drawing and I can go back in here and quickly create a whole new section. So there's a lot of functionality that they've added to bring it up to the standards that we kind of need to make quick architectural sections. Six, clipping plane functionality. In the same scene, I've created a clipping plane. And one thing you'll notice is that they've added these clipping plane properties. And you can now come in here and there is something that's just quite nice, which is called objects clipped which right now is we have under all, and you can include or exclude. Um, obviously, if you exclude, sorry, if you include selected and we have nothing selected, then it won't show anything. But we're going to use this exclude selected. And now what you can do is go and quite easily add in layers that you don't want clipped. So for example, I don't want this gem in the heart of this random pavilion I made uh, clipped or I could go in and add in specific objects and click on them and then enter. And now they're not included in the clipping plane. And this is just incredibly helpful when uh, using tools and you can use it to help quickly make uh, clean diagrams um, using you know, certain display modes like monochrome. Seven, sub decreases. So I've created a sub D object with a few faces on it. And if I use control shift and double click on this to select the edge loop, if I go to the typical crease, 
you can see that the, the behavior is exactly like in Rhino um, 7. So, but let's show what they've now added. If I now go to sub decrease and don't get me started on why they had to name it differently or, or whatnot, but they did. Um, now it gives us an option where you can actually start inputting values. And let's just say, if I click on this end, this vertice, now it says zero is smooth and 100 is heaviest. So let's just put 100 here. And now the way it will treat this edge loop, and then I click enter again, is you get the hardest level of crease at this vertice and the softest level of crease at this vertice. And it sort of interpolates in between, which you get some interesting results. Um, and you can kind of do this um, in any way. If I just right click to repeat the command, I can actually click also in the center vertice, for example, click uh, do 100, go on this one, click 50, enter, and then leave zero at this one and then click enter. And now you get these like kind of interesting variable creases. Um, I haven't done that much sub modeling recently, but I can, this one would be quite useful um, rather than that strict limitation you're getting with this type of crease. Although when you do export this, um, this crease will create two separate surfaces and these creases won't. So you'll get these as continuous nerve surfaces. Okay, that's it for today. Be sure to like, subscribe, and show some love in the comments and have a good day. Peace.